Good morning. Uh, I wanted to show you the eye chart that I've been using. It's called a Snellen chart, and it's you can see it behind my head. It's your standard eye chart that you probably have seen growing up as a kid or going to the doctor and getting your eyes checked. And um, it's what I've been using to take daily measurements of where my uh, eyes are with my current glasses, with my prescription. Um, and it's basically just testing the effectiveness of the glasses. So, and these are meant for, well, these are the glasses that I was prescribed by my ophthalmologist, but really I think they're used for, uh, distance vision. And so, um, as such, I have basically installed this eye chart up in my room. Uh, it's behind my bed. It's an easy place to to see it uh, in the morning, in the evening, when I get up, before I go to bed. Um, and it's an easy way for me to kind of check daily where I'm at. So I've, you know, this is one I found uh, in a book that I had originally picked up on the Bates method, which um, I might have it right here in my bookshelf. But um, the Bates method was something, uh, is a method that was um, started by an ophthalmologist or an optish, op, optima, optometrist, optician. He was uh, a doctor in the 30s, and um, he is kind of one of the like few um, doctors that kind of challenge the mainstream idea that glasses were the only way to improve your vision. And he uh, kind of uh, basically came up with this this concept that really your eyes are being strained and which they are um and you need to you know relax your eye um basically there's these there are these techniques you do that I didn't get far enough into and I couldn't find the book on the shelf but um I didn't get far enough into it because I ended up actually just coming across endmyopia.org and it seemed like a more thorough more time-tested people tested method and based in science. I mean, the Bates method is based in science as well, but it was like, it, it kind of drew it out in a very clear picture to me what was actually happening with my eyes, <clears throat> which is that your eyes are not uh, actually, there's nothing wrong with them. They are just in a temporary state of muscle spasm. Initially, when you first start, you know, having difficulty uh, seeing the board as a kid or something, but as you're as you start wearing glasses, your myopia progresses further and further, and that's based off of lens induced myopia, which means that your glasses are actually making the problem worse and causing it. So, um, found that eye chart in the Bates Method book, so that was really easy for me. I just kind of put it up on my wall. But um, you know, I put it about twenty feet away, which is actually further than the distance of my room. So I put it out like in the hallway can see like by the couch um I mean I put it 20 feet away from that I had to measure 20 feet from that and um that's kind of where I ended up so I go over by the couch and I check my eyes on the chart every day um <clears throat> and it shows you like okay this line is 2200 this line is 2040 this line 2030 2020 so it breaks it down for you so that you can just you can just tell very easily you know, if you can see one of those lines clearly, you know what your vision is. So, um, 2020 being this one right here. So if you can see this line clearly from 20 feet away, then you are seeing 2020. Um, uh, so, okay. I was like really hesitant at first to put this chart up. I was like, man, I don't want to do this. This sounds like tedious. Um, and I also realized that I've had kind of like this stigma against, um, this kind of like unhappy feeling about using eye charts, kind of going back to childhood when I first discovered I needed glasses because like basically it reminded me that my vision was poor and that I couldn't see. And so I kind of had this like mentality it, all throughout my life wearing glasses that like my eyesight sucks. It's like, I'm never going to see well, uh, distance vision. I might as well just like say, okay, I'm blind. Like I just, 
even with glasses, like it, things weren't clear. They like they're clear at first when you get the glasses and over time they lose their clarity. And that makes a lot of sense now. I understand why that is, but like for so long, I just thought like, well, that's the way my eyes are. It's genetic. It's going to get worse. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, <clears throat> now that I've learned kind of like the science behind it, um, I understand what my eyes are doing and this chart is helping me, the daily measurements are helping me to see how my eyesight is affected every day. So like today on a day like this, it's not very sunny outside. Um, it's rainy. It's a spring day. It's cold. It's in March and we aren't getting a lot of sunlight today, ironically, even though we're in Texas. Um, so on days like that, my eyesight tends to um, be less sharp um, with my glasses on. And, um, you know, so I've been tracking in a journal, like logging my eyesight since, um, March 3rd and today is the 22nd. So I have many weeks of entries, um, and it started off my vision on March 3rd at 1 15 PM. I was seeing about 20, 30 in both eyes. Um, at night on the 4th, I was seeing like 20, 50. That's not very good. Um, but this morning when I woke up and I went, you know, I actually uh, measured my eyes. One of the first things I did after I woke up um, and I was at 20, 20. So that is an indication that even just implementing these habits for the past few weeks of not using my distance glasses for close up, going outside more, which I already was doing, but going outside and actually practice seeing into the distance. Uh, all of these things, uh, limiting my screen time, um, not a, like a lot, just, just being conscientious of when I'm on my laptop or phone, why I'm on there, how much time I'm spending and trying to just get a sense of like, okay, is this too much for my eyes and are they going to be strained? So just practicing those simple tasks have already helped me to just improve my vision just with the glasses I'm wearing now. And that's not even doing the active focus, which I think I understand, but I'm going to learn more about that as I go along in this course. Um, or switching my lenses, reducing the power and everything like that, which is part of the whole thing. So just already, just these practices alone of simply measuring my eyesight in the morning, limiting my use on screens or being aware of it and um, practicing my distance vision outside, it's already, I'm seeing a lot sharp, more sharpness and clarity. So that's cool. Um, I think that it's going to only get better and I've really enjoyed um, this process and I actually have enjoyed challenging my distance vision and telling myself, changing the story in my head and changing the narrative, instead of saying, oh, my vision sucks and I can't see anything, I say, well, what can I see today? And how sharply can I see it? So like when I'm outside, I try to see as far off into the distance. When I'm walking my dogs, I, I look as far off into the distance as I can. And I try to see what street signs I can read or who's walking out, you know, several blocks away or what cars are passing by and what they look like. And that's something I never really cared to do or thought to do before I started this uh, program. So there's the eye chart, super easy. Um, I've now re-established a relationship with my eye chart, with the eye chart. I no longer hate it. It's no longer a love-hate relationship. Um, we're actually kind of like buddies now. Yeah, that's why I get the spot right here. So anyway, that's how I've been using the eye chart. That's just one the many ways to measure your eyesight and we'll talk about other ways later.